We're running out of sap and we're shutting down. What are you, what is your procedure when you're shutting down? So while I'm shutting down, I'm down to very little sap. So I've boiled on this rig a couple of times this year, so I'm familiar with it. And even if I'm running the same evaporator as I ran last year, I'm always a little bit timid or cautious when shutting down the first time of that new season. So I'm normally cautious to the point where I'll flood the pan a little bit more than I want to. Um, now I have some experience with it, so I'm shutting down more aggressively. I have my depth set at about an inch and a half right now, or even a little bit less. And I'm down to literally, I'm down to literally about three gallons to put into the system. And I have a firebox that's pretty darn full of coal yet too. And I'll show you. That's what I have to burn away. That looks like more than it is. If I took a shovel and broke that up a little bit, it would settle down to not very much at all. Um, I don't think I'm going to draw off any more syrup because I just got done drawing off probably almost two quarts, which was a nice long draw off for an evaporator this size. So I don't think I'm going to have to worry about that, but just in case, now I, I did take my pan away, my filter pan where I'm drawing off into. I got rid of that, so that's out of the equation because I, I brought that in into the house where it's warm, it's up in the kitchen, and it's filtering really, really well. I just want to keep it as warm as possible, just in case, if later on I do want to bottle what we took in today, I can measure the density and bottle it. Probably won't, but at least it's in the house, it's, it's clean. Um, just in case I do have to draw off, I do have a small stainless steel pan here. I have somewhere to go with it if I do need to take syrup off while I'm standing here. Again, don't think I will. Um, so how much sap are you, for a Dauntless evaporator with divided pan, how much um, sap should we have on hand while we're shutting down like this? So if, you were, if someone were to ask you that... If you're new to the game, I would say that by the time you stop throwing firewood in, you should have five gallons left, at least. That's in addition to uh, the sap you have in your pan, of course. Um, that would be a, probably a bare minimum if you're brand new to it. but. Um, like I said, I have about three gallons, but I stopped firing 15 minutes ago, probably 20 minutes ago already I stopped firing. Um, and I can take a shovel at any point and I can break those coals down and you'll see that they lay pretty flat. And I guess we'll probably do that on camera. I'll grab a shovel. And you can see the boil of the pan it has dropped dramatically. It's hardly boiling at all. I still have my cold sap coming in uh, like I did. So the idea is to spread these coals out evenly over the grates so that they are burned out evenly. If you look in there and you see the grates, shovel some coals over the top of those grates so that the, so that the air can, can evenly wash through those coals and burn them away. With forced draft evaporators, your shutdown procedure is about a third of the time of a non-forced draft evaporator because the forced draft evaporators inject air into those coals and burn them away really quickly. That's a big luxury of a forest draft evaporator. I've had people ask me um, if they have a lot of coals, if they should be scooping them out and getting rid of them. No. If you have a lot of coals, if you have coals that build up beyond like what we have in there, that's not a coal problem. That burns away really quickly. You want that you need coal in there, of course, to reignite your new, new charge of wood. If you find yourself tempted to scoop coals out, that means you're feeding your evaporator firewood that should not be attempted to be burned. Um, it's like it's too green? It's too green. Yep, if you... Did you close the damper at this point? No, no, I, I did not close the damper because I want those coals to burn away. Um, Instead of choking them? Uh... Only, oh. shovel, only shovel coals out of your firebox if it's an emergency. That's a waste of energy. It's a waste of your fuel source. Um, it's messy. It's dangerous. Everything about scooping coals out of your firebox is wrong. Don't get into that habit. Uh, get better than that. Get better at shutting down. Um, preemptively stop adding, stop adding firewood. At, Get, get that procedure down. I don't want to see people scooping hot coals out of their firebox. That's not a good procedure. So at what point would you close the damper? I'm not going to. Never. I, I, when would I close the damper? If I have an emergency. If, 
if a gust of wind came over and blew my stack pipe down, uh, if 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 I had a pregnant wife who was having a baby, which I don't, if I had a pregnant <laughs> wife who was having a baby, I would close the damper. Um, if I had uh, an emergency lunch appointment, uh, I would close the damper. I, I would. I don't ever close the damper. I don't ever ever close the damper because why would I want a bunch of smoldering coals in my firebox? Uh, they're unpredictable. Um, they're a mess later on. So no, I don't ever close the damper. Great. Anything else you want to talk about for shutting down? Um, no, other than when you run out of sap, you will see the gradient fade at least partially. Um, you can see the gradient is very defined right now yet because we're still running sap in. We have something very close to syrup here, something halfway to syrup here, and something close to raw sap here. When you stop adding sap, even if you have heat on it yet, you will see that start to mix within uh, within like a half hour, you'll start to see a mix there. That starts to wash away the danger you have of making syrup here. Because keep in mind, you have fire brick in here. Fire brick is hot. Fire brick continues to heat your pan and even boil your pan well off, well after the point where your coals are gone. Um, so uh, that's a little bit of a piece of peace of mind, I guess, to see that gradient uh, start to uh, backflow or mix or whatever. That, that detracts from the danger you have of making syrup here when you don't want to or when you're not even attending it anymore. And that gradient will reestablish itself next time real you... Real quick. That gradient comes back real quick when you start adding sap to the other end again. Yeah. And here we are, for all practical purposes, shut down. You can see there's a clear density gradient from where the sap has been entering in the left channel. Quite a bit darker to the center channel and very dark in the right channel. We boiled for maybe two hours, I would say. We... Um, that didn't have a lot of time tonight. We didn't even run out of sap, but we ran out of time. We have some errands to run tonight, so we are all done. And see, now we're down to remnants of hot coals, but the fire brick is hot. Um, this, this right now, when you're shutting down, this is when it's time to be thankful that the whole entire evaporator isn't full of fire brick. It just should not be. The fire brick is there only where there's firewood and that's what you want. It's time to go in for the night. So now what? Can we just well, walk away or? I'm gonna put a lid on. Um, if I had a wheel kit on I would probably wheel it under the overhang of the woodshed or maybe into the garage or something, but I don't and I'm not expecting rain anyway. So I'm just going to put a lid on it um, just to keep the bugs and the critters out of it overnight and if it does rain at least I won't have to re-evaporate re any of that rain that, that comes into it. Yep. Great. Another thing about that lid is Let's just say you are worried about it. Your fire brick is holding heat. You do have some hot embers yet. I have a lid on. I, that's going to impede the evaporation. If it does continue to steam, it's going to condense on the lid and fall back in. Is there anything you need to worry about if it does rain? Um, like with the firebox? Yeah, I, the, the arch really shouldn't be out in the rain. Um, so if it does rain on the arch, expect that you might have spotty rust, but that can easily be cleaned up and fixed if that does happen to you. And the insulation is probably going to soak up some water. And even that's okay as long as you light a fire and run it for a couple of hours soon after to uh, dry out the, the ceramic insulation. If that ceramic insulation sits wet for very long, it's going to start rusting the, the arch from the inside. And the last thing you want to do is have it rain on your arch and put it away for the year like at the end of the season if that insulation sits full of water it'll sit full of water all summer long and the damage that can be done to your arch is devastating so ideal scenario you keep everything dry and covered and best case scenario you have your dauntless or your star cat or your corsair set up in some kind of shed, some kind of dedicated building, and you don't have to worry about any of this ever. Um, second best thing is to have wheels on it. 
so that you can wheel it under shelter when it's not in use. Um, at bare minimum, cover it with a lid. Great. And then we'll be able to just pick up where we left off um, next time we want to boil? Yeah, you bet. Tomorrow we're going to have more sap. We're going to light up and off we go. All right. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. This is what it boils down to. This is what it boils down to.